The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is Boeing's most recent all-new aircraft model. The long-range mid-size aircraft has allowed travel between small cities, further bringing the world closer together. Now the 787-8, the 9 and the 10 seat between 242 and 335 passengers in a typical three-class configuration. It's 20% more fuel efficient than its predecessor, the 767, and the aircraft was designed with composite structures, making the aircraft incredibly light. Now, in terms of orders, around 1,400 787s have been ordered, and 742 are currently in service as of October 2018. Now, during the late 1980s, Boeing saw their sales of the 767 and also the 747 models declining. The 747X, which was a stretched version of the 400, and the Sonic Cruiser, which was a supersonic Concorde competitor, was also proposed. Now, there wasn't much market interest for the 747X. However, many airlines were infused by the Sonic Cruiser, although they expressed their concerns about the operating costs. However, after the September 11 attacks, the global aviation industry was disrupted and demand dropped, with many airlines struggling to even survive. To make things worse, increased oil prices led to very high operating costs and demand grew for a very fuel-efficient aircraft. Boeing conceived a solution, codenamed the 7E7. It aimed to be a smaller mid-sized twin jet rather than the larger 747 size aircraft. This began the shift in the aviation industry where the old hub and spoke model of carrying passengers from point A to point C via point B on big planes like the 747s was more expensive for airlines rather than flying directly from point A to point C with smaller jets like the 787. Now the 787 was the second part of Boeing's Yellowstone project, which aimed to replace its entire lineup of aircraft with three planes. The 797 is set to replace the 727, the 37, and also the 757. The 787 is meant to replace the 767, and the 777X is designed to replace the older 777s and the 747. Now, the development story of the 787 is well known to many people. Initially planned for entry into service in May 2008, the 787 suffered eight separate delays between 2007 and 2011. The reasons range from supply chain problems, weight problems, design issues, and even a blowout in the Trent 1000 engine. Due to this, Boeing delivered a 787 three years later to ANA. Now, the first set of the Dreamliners were overweight by several tons, and the poor performing engines didn't hit their targets for fuel consumption. On top of that, Boeing had to pay out hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation to their customers because of the performance guarantees that they signed for the plane. Now in 2003, the 787 was grounded for more than three months due to the plane being defective, and the reason was due to the lithium batteries, which had a risk of inflammation. Now in April 2004, All Nippon Airways announced an order for 50 787s, making them the launch customer for the Dreamliner. Now deliveries were set to begin in late 2008, and the order consisted of 30 787-3s, which was originally supposed to carry up to 330 passengers on short-range routes. It also consisted of 20 787-8s, which seats around 250 passengers, for regional international routes like Tokyo Narita to Beijing, but also for ultra-long-haul lower-demand routes like Tokyo to Denver and Moscow. The first airliner to feature a composite fuselage instead of multiple aluminium sheets, the 787 had over 50,000 fasteners. Now, the powerhouses of the plane were the General Electric GENX and the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000. Recently, the Rolls-Royce engines have led to many 787s being grounded due to the increased wear on the blades. About 40% of the extra 20% fuel efficiency over the 767 was a result of better engines, with gains from aerodynamic improvements and weight contributing to the rest. The 787-8 and 9 were given 330 minutes ETOPS clearance, meaning that they could fly up to 330 minutes away from the nearest airport over the ocean in case of an engine failure. Now, the A350 extra wide body has the longest ETOPS rating of 370 minutes, or just over 6 hours, meaning it can fly almost anywhere on Earth. Now, the first aircraft appeared at the Farnborough Air Show in 2010. However, around two weeks later, the Trent 1000 engine suffered a blowout during the ground testing, and this delayed the 787 program. A month later, an engine surge occurred, further delaying the development of the aircraft. 
that two months later, smoke and flames engulfed the cabin of the plane whilst in test flight, caused by the electrical systems, and the flight testing was suspended until December the 23rd, 2010. Now it was safe to say that the aircraft was on a crash course. However, the aircraft was eventually certified on September the 25th, 2011, and the ANA received their first 787-8. They received a second Dreamliner two weeks later, and on October the 26th, the Dreamliner flew its first commercial flight between Tokyo Narita and Hong Kong, even though the Dreamliner was three years late. The tickets were sold on an online auction, and the highest bidder paid $34,000 for one C, which is around 13 times the price of the usual business class ticket between two hubs. Now, the Dreamliner was supposed to be a passenger favorite also. ANA surveyed 800 passengers who flew their 787 from Tokyo to Frankfurt. 90% of the passengers said that the aircraft exceeded their expectations, and 25% said that they would go out their way to fly the 787 again. The aircraft was great for airlines too. Fuel burn was 21% less than the 767-300ER on international flights, and the operating cost was 6% lower than its competitor, the A330. Now, IAG's budget airline, Level, is only introducing two more A330s since there are not enough 787 pilots. The 787 has a dispatch reliability of 99.3%, meaning that 99.3% of flights leave the gate with no more than 15 minutes of delay due to technical issues. Now, the Dreamliner program has cost Boeing $32 billion. It's expected to make a profit in the future, however, as airlines are still ordering the aircraft. I briefly mentioned the 787-3. This was cancelled, but let's talk a bit about the proposal. It would have carried around 290 and 330 passengers, with a maximum range of 5,500 kilometers. To keep the Dash 8 model on track for delivery, the Dash 9 was postponed, but it still had priority of the Dash 3. It had 43 orders, but they were all converted to the 787-8s by January 2010, and eventually Boeing later withdrew the model. Now, initial customers like ANA and Japan Airlines use the plane to expand to Europe and also the US. British Airways uses it for North and South America. Hainan Airlines has expanded into Deep Asia and also Europe, and the list goes on and on. But perhaps the most innovative use of the 787 is for ultra-long-haul travel. Only a select few planes are able to fly ultra-long-haul, such as the 777-200LR and also the A350-900ULR. Now, the first airline to use the 787-9 for ultra-long-haul travel was United Airlines on San Francisco and Singapore. This flight was so successful that United is expanding to Los Angeles to Singapore. Meanwhile, Qantas has gone a step further and plans to use the 787-9 to operate the world's second-longest flight from Perth to London. Now, if the 787-9 in particular continues to find use as an ultra-long-haul plane, then it will end up being even more transformational than Boeing's most optimistic project. Up to now, the aircraft has 1,398 orders, and 742 of those have been delivered and they're currently in service. Looking back in hindsight, even though the 787 was plagued with issues, at the end of the day, the Dreamliner has met and exceeded the expectations of its customers. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Boeing will make a profit of the program in the future, and to predict whether sales will slow down in the coming years. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Boeing History Timeline videos. Check out my other videos which talks about Boeing's other planes and also their history. If you enjoyed the video then give it a like and also consider subscribing and I hope to see you guys in the next Airbus Timeline History video.